question. I was wondering what um, if, if the media logs, like when they're due, if will specific media things be assigned, or is it just or a combination of both? No, we had gone back and forth on that. I had thought about what would be the best way for everyone to learn, and it's very individual. And how did I like to learn? I like options, so I didn't. You know, of course, I went to a school from my bachelor's to, um, it was so free that I could create my own curriculum with the, an MIT teacher, and I only had to show up on campus for seven days. So I got to choose the books I wanted to study, and I, I had them approved by my teacher. But having that option was so empowering. Yeah. And I decided to leave that wide open for students to just peruse the library, and whatever it is that lights you up, it's probably what you should be learning. Awesome. I like the sound of that. Yeah, me too. And I like that it's, it's um, keeping you open-hearted, open-minded, because Ayurveda is the science of life, and there is, there's really no end to learning it. So you can't say you went to school for a year and you know everything. So it, all these things in the library are different branches of the Veda that you can explore and realize just how much information for the rest of your life you could be studying and never really be a master of it all. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Anyone else have a question while I'm here? We still have three minutes. I'm sorry. I don't know how to download your this thing on my, should I come out of the screen and then go into my computer? I don't know how to do it. You want to know how to download? Yes, I'm not getting it on my computer, so I'm kind of, what is it called? It's an ebook. Is that what it's called? No, there's nothing that I'm showing on my screen yet. I haven't shared my screen, so I don't know what you're trying to download. I don't know. They sent us a, a thing to download, so I was trying to download that. Oh, was it, it was a gift ebook? An Ayurveda yes. ethos? Oh, yeah, that's for you to, to read on your own. It's just a gift I gave everybody. There's no homework on it, no necessary reading, and we're not even going to talk about it tonight. So oh, that was just okay. All right. So, oh, dear, lost it. Okay, I've, I've downloaded it. You Thank can you. download it on your own time. Just think of it as an early Christmas present. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Anyone else? No? Uh, I'm putting links to the handouts for the folks who didn't have time to download them. Okay. Look in your chat. I'm just starting to do it now, um, but we are recording and it's 6.30, so I'll just continue doing this and we can get started. All right, I see Nikki and Jackson is here. Hi, Jackson. Hello. And um, hello. And. Hello. Um, Ruby and Susan, Karen Dahl, Jason, Indu, Renee, Laura. Okay, so I'm looking through, and as I see, hello, everybody. Hello. I am I'm asking you to unmute yourself unless you want to sing with me. I'm going to do a little chant. <clears throat> Just checking to see who else is here. There's a lot of people that have not muted, so make sure you've muted yourself. Otherwise, we're going to hear you sneezing and any phone ringings or whatever is in your background and that would be distracting. So moving on. Um, yeah, it looks like everybody's muted now, except Jason. Jason, would you mind muting? I don't know, maybe Jason had a tea break. <laughs> I don't know, but oh, we'll get started. I'd like to just chant the um, initial chant that we always chant in the beginning of all educational, Vedic Arya educational sessions, and maybe Molly did it yesterday, or not last yesterday, um, last week. So Molly, if you want to chant with me, anyone that knows it, that wants to even just try it, fake it till you make it, I would love you to all sing with me. Here we go, take a breath in. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahano Bhunaktu Sahaviryam karavavahai 
Tejas vina vadita mastu madid vishava hai. Om shanti shanti shanti. Okay, so this is very exciting. I have prepared a beautiful PowerPoint and I have so much information. I don't know if I can get it all in this two hours or whatever this is. Let me just share my screen and begin. <clears throat> Sharing screen, Microsoft. Okay, can everybody see my my PowerPoint? I can see it, Karen. How yep. about anybody else? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Yes, oh, okay. yes, I see it. Great. Okay. I can see it. Yay! Thanks to Molly. Molly gave me great instructions. Thank you, Molly Dolly. Okay, so did anyone fill out their dosha questionnaire? I sent it. I, I did. Um, I, I didn't fill it out because I don't know the time I was born. I was born in India, and uh, I mean, the, so many years back, I was born into. The, I'm in. The, I'm born in the Christian faith, and my parents never have don't have the time. But I can tell you where I was born, and if that helps. You mean you don't remember when you were born? I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> no, don't even worry. Don't worry. That's not even the question. Um, that's another whole topic that you can talk about with Renee or um, I think Ben is actually doing everybody's charts. So we're going to get everybody's Jotish charts for the next time that I'm teaching. For this class, we don't need a birth time of day or a birthday or a Jotish chart. So you don't have to worry and do right now. Uh, okay. If you can't get your birth time of day too, there's other ways around it. We can figure out something for you, but it is really helpful if you can get the birth time. But if you can't, you can't, right? So let's go on to this topic, universal attributes and doshic theory. I sent you an attachment. One was a questionnaire, and it had all the gunas, and the gunas are um, is a Sanskrit word for attributes. So we want to review all the gunas or attributes of each of the doshas today. And that's why I thought this particular questionnaire was really pertinent and relevant to today's topic. So I don't expect that you all did this by yourselves, that you all filled it in, because it's a little complicated and I, I prefer if I'm going to do it with somebody, I do it with them while they fill it out because questions come up, it can be a little complicated. So if you want to do that now, then um, I can, I'm sitting here right here, you can just, we can even go through it together, all of you, and check off your little check marks. I'm going to pull this PowerPoint aside and pull up the dosha. Can you see, can you see the dosha? I don't know what you can see. I have the dosha chart on my screen now, or is still the PowerPoint the only thing everybody sees? Just, just the PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Oh, okay. All right, then why don't I... Um, see if I can switch over to share screen, new, new share maybe? Yeah, I'm going to share my desktop. Okay. Now I'm hoping you can see that. Can you see that dosha? What's your dosha? No. Oh, yes, yes. Yes? Okay, good. So there's eight qualities of Ayurvedic imbalances. And qualities are another word for attributes. They can be used, you know, interchangeably, quality, attribute, and guna. So what we're going to do is, is really break down the doshas. And this is interesting because I actually never learned how to do this until after I graduated from Dr. Lat's institute. He felt my pulse and he did my tongue, you know, the analysis. And I had a full-blown reading and even my jyotish reading and all of that. And um, he said I was, I had, he assigned numbers. He said I was Vata 1, Pitta 3, Kapha two. So that's what, those are the spikes that he felt in my pulse for the doshas. And then I graduated and that's what I took away. That was my takeaway, was the um, Vata one, Pitta three, Kapha two. So basically he called me a Pitta person. So my highest dosha was Pitta. And for a couple of years, I ate according to Pitta and I, 
I associated myself with just Pitta. And it was later that I actually met another teacher who helped me break down my Pitta, who actually helped me dissect and analyze exactly what uh, in my Pitta that I had in most preponderance, like, like what of the attributes were highest in my constitution. That was really insightful for me. So in other words, um, I was eating salads and cooling foods and um, cooling foods meaning like, um, I uh, can't think of cucumbers and just, just the Pitta diet is all these cooling foods. But when I met Gandharva, my next teacher, who taught me about the attributes of the doshas and how to eat for those, I started eating cooling and grounding foods because I realized I had too much light quality of pitta or light guna that belonged to pitta. So I refined my diet even more from just cooling to cooling and grounding because of this dosha questionnaires, he also looked at my Jyotish, and there were some other factors involved, but this is going to really help you understand which of the doshas are highest, and then which of the attributes of the doshas, so we can go in very deeply to analyze. So let's look at this. Let's take the first question. First question. My mouse. So we're going to look at the qualities of Pitta, which... Um, Start with heat. So go ahead and check these off or make notes, or you can even you know do one, two, three on a piece of paper if you don't have a printer under the under the framework of heat, under the topic of heat. Undigested pieces of food in your stools. If yes, throughout your whole life, not just this week or today, this is your whole life. That's a very important question as you're answering these questions to know from what barometer are you answering these questions? And I'm telling you, over a lifespan. I mean, if you just once or twice saw undigested pieces of food in your stools, don't bother checking it. But if it's, it's pretty common for you your whole life, then check yes on that. And then having heart palpitations, heart pain, heart problems, check yes if you had you know, anything like that. Um, does anyone have a question about what we're doing? Feel free to interrupt me at any time if you have a question about that. We this all heart, have, I have a yeah. question about heart palpitation. Is this something that we have to have it every day or just once? No, that, I was hoping you would ask me that or somebody would ask me that because that it, it is complicated because everybody has a palpitation every now and then when we get nervous, you might, you know, get a, your heart might go fast. But I'm... I'm asking these questions based on a little bit more of a serious symptoms. So serious meaning, let's define that. Maybe um, heart pain, heart problems, and palpitations such that you would actually want to ask a doctor. Like you, you, you think to yourself, this is not normal. I think I better tell my doctor I'm oh. having heart pain. If it's something that you don't feel in your, in your heart, excuse the pun, is a problem and it's just a, like a little minor thing then let's not check that does that make sense thank you that may clarifies it okay good and then low blood pressure and low blood pressure you would know from going to your doctor or if you get up fast and you're dizzy check that if that happens frequently if it's happened once or twice in your life don't check it it's very complicated if you check everything so make sure you check selectively and so having, I have three boxes I've checked. So what does that mean? Oh, don't worry. Just we're going to go to the end and then you're going right. to count. We're, you're going to count how many you checked under each category. And then you're going to make a, a tally. Say you checked four in heat. And then you maybe checked only two in heaviness. And maybe you checked four in oiliness. And we're going to use those tallied numbers as indicators. So let's just keep going. How to scroll down or oh, they open this? What? Somebody said something? <laughs> hi, hello. I'm Denny. Denny. I just got it. Hi, hi. You here? Okay. We're doing questionnaire, so um, you can see the screen, hopefully, and go along with us and, and, and answer yes or no on these questions. Mm-hmm. Okay? And um... 
Like it is show on the web page, right? It's show on. I sent on. it on the email, so it's it's in the email as well as. Oh yeah, on yeah. My I got it. Good, good. You can see it in both places. So feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question, Denny. But mute yourself um, when you don't have a question, just in case you and your husband are having a conversation. Everybody will be able to hear you if you don't um, if you don't mute yourself. Okay, so moving on, trouble digesting hot, spicy foods. And specifically, that means if you, if you um, digest, say you, you um, eat a chili pepper, of course, everyone's going to go, oh, my God, my eyes are watering. But seriously, if you have burping, um, if, you, if you're finding yourself going out to Thai restaurants and you're telling the waiter, not, don't put spicy because you know you'd be burping and having gas and, and trouble all night digesting it, then, yes, that's you. Check that off. If, if it's not a big deal and you just, you know, get a little watery eye every now, now and then, it's not a big deal. Don't check it. Then moving on to poor circulation, hands and feet. Every now and then we're all going to have cold hands and feet. But if this is a chronic issue for you, you, you know that you are someone that brings the socks in your purse. If you're going to visit a friend's house and you've got an extra pair of socks in your purse because your feet are always cold, then check this. Can, can I ask you a question? Yes, sure. My question is, um, if, if recent, you know, say postmenopausal or, or um, um, for whatever reason, I, I've always had cold hands and feet, but I haven't lately. So how do, how do we do this? Like before um, hormonally or what we are now? Well, it should be over your whole lifetime. If suddenly you no longer have cold hands and feet, and I would say over the last year, something may have really shifted in your system where you don't really need to worry about that anymore. And you've, you've, you know, like you've heard of that. You know how people have allergies in the beginning of their life and then they no longer have them? Okay. Yes, if, if you feel like you've hurdled something and you no longer have a problem digesting spicy foods or no longer get health, heart palpitations at all, or, you know, the hands and feet no longer are a problem cold, then don't check this. But if you are having these problems and have had them over your life, consider them to be an issue, then yes, that's when you check this. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Thank you. Okay. And then symptoms worsen in hot weather. And this can be any symptom that worsens in hot weather. Say you were really in a cranky mood or, or um, you had a rash or you you know, felt nauseous, and then you go outside in the sun and you sit with that and it gets worse, then check that. I don't know, I used to get my period and have horrible cramps. And as soon as I would go in the sun or get, you know, somebody would turn the heat up or any heat during those cramp times, it would just exacerbate the pain. So I knew that that particular symptom was heat related. So inflammatory. So um, that's just an example. If you can think of a symptom that gets worse for you. Some people get better in the heat. So make sure if you get better in the heat, don't check this. Moving on, have frequent self-condemnations and worthlessness or feelings of low self-esteem. Now, these are pretty general questions, but and they're hard to write the question out specifically because we're all going to have these feelings every now and then. But if this is something that you feel follows you, that you really wrestle with, then, then you should check this. this. If it's a big deal for you, then um, check that. Feel best with high protein and worse with high carbs. So, Check that if you ever did a, a protein, you know, drank a lot of protein shakes and felt much better, um, or you could have felt worse. So um, check, you, that's pretty simple, you can do that one. And then see blood on your stools. You might have done it, you know, one time, maybe you ate corn and then blood in your stools, but if it's a frequent thing, maybe once a year, or you've had it, you know, maybe 10 or 15 times in your entire life, then I would check that. Because that's not, that shouldn't be happening, and it's not a common thing for, for most people. It, it's definitely heat-related. Okay, so here's a big one. If you sweat easily or not at all. I've had people 
who I know were high pit to people and they just couldn't sweat. They were so hot that, that their, the liquids, the, the liquid guna in their body was dried up. And then there are people who were so hot that the liquid guna was out of control and that they, could, they would just be sitting at, uh, beside me in a restaurant going like this on their forehead and, and I'm you know, like feeling fine or even a little chilly and they're sweating next to me. This is a heat problem. Uh, a lot of people overweight too because the adipose tissue retains the, the heat and they just start sweating. But that, you know, that is something you should check even if it is just related to adipose tissue. Okay, so feels best on, oh no, I wrote that. I mean, I, I said that, where are we? But you sometimes feel hot earlier in the day, chilled later in the day. You might need to think about that one. Sometimes feel overly hot in hot weather, cold in cold weather. So in other words, if your body has trouble adjusting its temperature and regulating its temperature, mine does. I have a body that really struggles with temperature regulation, especially at night. I would check that, and that's been my whole life. Dislike sour foods. Pickles, vinegars, or have trouble with it. I know when I eat vinegar and you know on a salad, which I try never to do, my throat starts to close up and I start choking horribly. And so I would check this, you know, so go beyond dislike if you have a reaction to vinegar. Have gastritis or excess bile formation. And excess bile formation can just mean, you know, you if you throw up, it's all green or um, you have sort of a jaundice, you can have jaundice looking eyes, which are, you know, the whites of your eyes are yellow. Um, bloating in the stomach, just, you know, like, like leaky gut or, or diverticulitis, something like that. I, what about if we have a lot of indigestion? Indigestion, is it, is it bloating? Yes. Yes, okay, then, then write that. That I should. Then check. I should, uh, should mark that? Yes, check that. Because that indigestion is gastritis, basically, and you're bloated, you're bloated from gas. Oh. Yeah. So if the eyes are sensitive to light, if you're someone who just, you know, needs their sunglasses outside, absolutely, then I would say yes to this. And if you have spinal pain, so... And I mean not just once or twice, but somebody who, you know, goes to the, to the chiropractor or gets a massage and, you know, the massage therapist asks, where's the pain and you say the spine? And that's something you feel like a broken record saying, I would check that. Even if it's just a minor spinal pain that happens, you know, once or twice a month or, or, or um, six times a year, even if you get spinal pain, I would still say yes to this. Okay, moving on. Let's... um. Let's check this, you know, how many you actually got. How many in the heat field did you get? Can um, you tally that up? Um, I got seven. You got seven? Would everybody call out their numbers so I can know where you're at? Seven Hindu, okay. Also seven for me. Seven, Jackson. Three. Also seven for me. So seven, wow, who, who was the other one that had seven? Let me open my bigger screen here. Um, who, who had the other seven? Is that Ruby? I had seven. I had seven. So, I have eight. So say your names when you're calling out because my screen isn't showing me faces. Ruby so had eight. Um, I'm gonna, I think I think I saw Nikki say eight. Ruby. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby has eight. Okay. Wow, and a lot of pit to people. Oh I my goodness. Carindale has three. Carindale has three. Oh my gosh. Yes, I believe you're more Vata, the little oh, Vata. <laughs> yes. Okay, oh. Molly, what did you have, Molly? I am pit to poisoned right now, so I have seven. Oh no. Okay. Heat quality. What do you, in heat quality, I wrote three. Sorry? In heat quality, I had three. Didn't you say you had seven? I had seven. Oh, I had seven plus three. So that would be 10. Wait a minute. 
I don't know if there is 10. Let me see. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. six. Oh, there is 10. Did you check off 10 that applied to you as a yes? Yes. 10. Oh, my goodness. Okay, you're little, my little pit to soul sister, you and I. Okay, so we're going to keep going to the cold quality. I had four, Karen. Oh. Laura, Laura had four. Laura had four. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yep. All right, then. So we're not all pittas here. So that's, so let's check out. You could have um, light quality, Laura, of pitta. So let's, let's check that out. So we're not completely ruling out pitta yet because the light quality of pitta is coming up next. This was the heat quality of pitta. Let's go into quality of cold. This is totally um, vata and kapha, vata and kapha. No pitta involved here. Feeling cold often, you're one of those people that just brings a sweater wherever you go even in the summer, <laughs> you know these people. And then if you have menstrual difficulties or irregularities, it's not always due to cold. Um, it, you know, it can be. The person who wrote this was an astrologer, so this cold is actually uh, referring to the moon, and we all call them the menstruation, the moon cycle. So if you have a lot of qualities here in moon, um, then you'll have a cold quality. So let's see, problems digesting raw food. So what that means is that you would either see that in the stool or you would have bloating and um, belly aches from eating too many raw carrots and broccoli and all those things. Um, slow digestion or low digestion. Slow digestion would mean just you know feeling like the, a rock in your stomach after you've eaten. Now there's exceptions. If you've eaten a Thanksgiving meal, then, um, you know, you're eating a huge meal, of course, it's going to be slow and low. But, you know, just in general, if you're eating and everybody else seems to have digested their meal already and you're still feeling lethargic and everything is just moving slow, check that. And this, this is something that recurs over your life. Remember to keep that in mind. And then having a subnormal body temperature. If you've ever gone to the doctor and you know, you get your blood pressure checked and then they check your temperature and you're one of those people that's just slightly lower than the normal range and that's just something that happens for you, then check that. Then have symptoms that worsen in the cold weather. And I think a lot of people's symptoms worsen in the cold weather, but in some cases, I actually felt better in the cold weather. So it really, this is very telling. Uh, because when I have worsened symptoms in cold weather, what kind of symptoms are we talking about? Well, I would go in general. So I would say if, um, you know, I, I remember when I had menstrual cramps, so I'll just go back to that. I was plagued with that most of my life. When I was exposed to heat, a hot summer day, or, you know, I was stuck somewhere and, and I couldn't get into air conditioning, I was suffering with pain. But if somebody could give me air conditioning during that, Pain and, and some sort of a Motrin. When I was a teenager, I didn't know anything about Ayurveda, so we had to have Motrin or wherever it was. But it had to be with air conditioning. I got so much better. Um, it could be anything. It could be, um, you know, diarrhea. It could be feeling cranky, your moods. If you're in a bad mood or a good mood, how does the cold weather affect you? If you uh, were having a you know, bellyache or you're a headache kind of girl, some people who get headaches, they have to have no light, they close their eyes and they have to have a dark room and it has to be cold. So, um, or if you sleep better in the cold or whatever it is that the cold does for you, if it, if, if it makes you better or worse is what you need to ask yourself. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and then vitality and difficulty moving in the morning. Everybody's gonna have a little bit of this and especially as we age, but if you were one of those people when you were a teenager and in your 20s and 30s, you wake up in the morning and everything was a little rusty and the, you, know, you felt like you're, you needed to have the oil can. <laughs> you know, you were um, slow going, the, the, the joints weren't moving, then um, I would check that. Frequent colds, this is a big one. If you're a mucousy kind of person, just tend to have you know, drippy nose or just you're always catching a cold or the liquid mucus quality is high in your body. Sinuses like that. Uh, frequent. 
So um, diarrhea and constipation with small dry stools. So ask yourself if you get that alternating kind of irritable bowel syndrome. So the moon is a Vata Kapha planet, and we'll get into that later, but it's a, uh, the moon is, is both Vata and Kapha, and it has variables depending on when it's Kapha and when it's Vata, because the moon wanes and waxes. So we can talk about that later, but that's why you might get a mixture of diarrhea, which is heat that liquefies the stool, and then you get constipation, which is dry quality, the little tiny pellets that come out, so you could vacillate with the moon. Okay, moving on. High quality, sorry, high carbohydrates, vegetable grains, or worse with high protein. So if you feel best with eating a nice big bowl of pasta and the high protein, like a big piece of steak, uh, a, you know, um, lots of eggs or whatever it is, it, you feel like you have a ton of bricks on you and heavy, then I would check yes on that. And then have a sense of well-being or centeredness from carbs. To some degree, we all will have a little bit of that because it triggers serotonin with that little happy uh, hormone. But in general, if you always need to have carbs to feel centered and, and well, then I would check that. You know, like in other words, if you're really hungry and you go eat a boiled egg, you should feel okay. But if you, if you need a carb with it, I would check that. Okay, um, not that you should be carb free, don't get me wrong, but just, just, that, that, just that body awareness, that knowing of what's going to center you. It, is it you're craving a hard boiled egg and you're going to be good after that? Blood sugar regulates, you're feeling good. Or are you going to grab a bagel? You might feel good for a moment and then you crash. So notice that. If you're somebody that feels good all the way through with the bagel, then check that. Okay, so um, poor circulation, so that would be um, cold hands and feet. Yes, yeah, same thing as above, but poor circulation can mean other things too, where you get varicosities. So some of the, your veins, you know, and your legs start to bulge and you feel like your legs aren't getting enough blood flow, then this is related to the moon, the cold quality. And then fibroids and uterine disease. So that is also um, something to check if you have uterine fibroids, which are very common, especially in this day and age. But if you are plagued with them and they're really big, and every time the gynecologist says, you know, we need to check those, I would check this. Cellulite, everyone's going to have cellulite, especially since everybody eats. Um, you know what Dr. Lab used to say? Olive oil was cooked. Olive oil used to cause cell, will cause cellulite. So I never cook olive oil anymore. And he went on to say that the volatile oils, the oils with the um, essential fatty acids that are very very sensitive, don't have high heat tolerance. Those oils are going to become rancid. And when the oils get rancid like that from the heat, they actually become um, toxins in the body and form cellulite. So yes, we're all going to have a little bit of that because everybody has probably, including me, had, you know, eaten the rancid oil. But if you have an extraordinary amount of it, you know, a little bit unusual, then check that. Okay, so profuse expectoration. I did not even know what that word meant when I took this exam. What the, does expectoration? It means when you wake up in the morning, you need to kind of blow your nose or this mucus or you're going to spit or you just have an accumulation of gunk. If that's every morning and you're just used to it, something to be aware of, but I've checked that. And then acute fevers. If you're just someone that's prone, prone to fever, you get a cold and say your daughter got a cold or your husband got a cold, but they didn't get a fever, but you got their same cold, but you got the fever, then I would check that. Just a minor fever, though, but you're, you're um, susceptible to them. And then if you have anemia, so um, the moon governs the blood. So let's move on. Let's um, go to the light quality. But first, would everybody tally up their cold quality? I have seven. Seven, you checked seven, Hindu? Yes, okay. I did. Okay. 
And uh, anyone else want to throw some numbers out so I get an idea of how many people? I got six. I got six. Okay. Got six. Saxon, okay. This is Susan, I have two. Susan, two, okay. Nisha, eight. Eight, Nisha, okay. Laura has five. Laura's five. Carindale, how many did you have? I got five like Laura, I think we're similar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's my right. and um, I got five. This is Molly. I got five. Molly got five. Okay. Okay, good. So let's move on to the light quality. Does anyone have any problems so far? Questions? Pretty simple, straightforward, right? I have a quick question. Yeah? Um, what's a good cooking oil to use then? Oh, because yeah, I use olive question. oil all the time. You and I don't want it anymore. Yeah, I use <laughs> olive oil all the time. No more cooking with olive oil. Mm -hmm. I use, use really ghee as the, the clarified butter. I use it in everything. Or uh, coconut oil is all right, unrefined coconut organic oil. And that has a high heat tolerance, so it won't go rancid easily. As soon as an oil starts to smoke in your pan, mm -hmm. that, that oil has gone rancid. And sometimes you're not looking, and especially if you're a pit to person, you tend to burn your foods or burn your oils or everything, you look at the bottom of all pitch of people's pots and pans in their kitchen, all of them will be born, will have burn marks. <laughs> because pitch of people tend to burn everything, and we're prone to fires, and we're just prone to heat. So as soon as you put your ghee at the bottom of a, a pan, and you're going to saute something, if you turn away for a minute and look back at it, and it's smoking, that ghee has gone rancid, and that will cause cellulite. So make sure you never let your, your oil smoke. And another Thing I can tell you about cooking, especially a pitch of person. I like my food, if I'm going to make eggs, for example, I like them to be browned. I like that little crunchy, little, you know, um, if you're going to eat meat and you're going to cook it till that crunch comes, that um, brownish quality, that's carcinogenic. So when you're making your eggs, when you're cooking with oil, nothing should be smoking or brown. Because you remember that the, the color brown indicates vata, and smoke is ether and air, which is vata. So we, you know, the vata stage of life is the old, old age. So eventually, vata is what kills everybody. So we want to, we want more kapha in our life, right? More unctuous qualities that are not brown colored and not smoky at all. Smoking will age you, and, and oil that smokes will kill you. So, so that's that. Did, did I answer your question? Oh, avocado oil. So ghee, coconut oil, and avocado oil is pretty good. That's what I use. That's what's in my kitchen. I don't ever use anything else to cook with. Okay, if we have oil left over, we deep fry something. So is it okay to use that oil or should we discard it? <clears throat> discard that oil. It's old and never use leftovers because anything that that is left over and sitting around, it starts to develop a new quality called Thomas. And Thomas, you'll learn, it, it is um, associated with the kapha element and it creates heavy qualities where bacteria starts to grow on it. And it, it loses its prana, it loses its life force. And all it is is just heavy quality that causes you to age more quickly and causes more melancholy, more um, blood platelets stick together, immune system gets suppressed, and it's, it's a, it causes slow quality in the body. And we don't want any slow quality in the body. We want a nice flow in the body. So any food, any oil that has been left over more than 24 hours becomes tamasic. And we do not want tamasic food in our body. Okay, so I, yeah, good question. So I digress. Let's go back to the light quality. Ever feel lightheaded or ungrounded? What is the meaning of ungrounded? Well, you know, you kind of wish somebody would come over and just anchor you down, like help, give you a hug and just sit you down, you know, with a big blanket and just get you, you know, getting your feeling back into your body. Some people get so frenetic that they're just spinning out of control and they're, all their thoughts and their energy is in their head and they can't stop talking and they're late and they're, they're fragmented, they're skipping words, they're, they're just not 
fully present, and that would be somebody ungrounded. If that's a constant trait that you have, then you should check that. Now you have a question here, ever have gallbladder trouble? They, yeah. I don't have a gallbladder in surgery, they removed it. So what do I do, just leave it? Why did they take it out? I have no idea. I had abdominal surgery and the doctor said he's found a cyst on it, so he removed it. That's all that I know. <laughs> oh, he found a cyst in it. Well, that's too bad he just took it out without asking you, not just take out the cyst and you need you to remove the whole thing. Yeah, he just removed it and discarded it. That's oh. what he told me when I came around. So I have no gallbladder. Oh, wow. Well, that's too bad. Well, you know, I'm sorry to hear that, but the... the um, um, oh, what's the word? Um, ileocecal, uh, no, um, duodenum. The yes. duodenum takes over. So the duodenum becomes your new gallbladder. So don't worry, you're not, you're not, you're not gypped. But um, it would have been nice if you could have kept your gallbladder. So yes, check this because um, this is Mars. So everything in Ayurveda goes back to planets. So um, it all started with the planets, basically. And from the planets, they developed the seers and the great rishis developed the gunas. So, and then from there they developed the doshas and, and the whole thing was written based on um, astrology and astronomy. So the light quality has everything to do with the planet Mars. So these questions that I'm asking you are Mars related. And so if you were unlucky and had all butter removed, it means that Mars was weak or possibly debilitated in your chart. So this, this means yes for you, check that. Okay, so eating high carb meal and feeling gassy, bloated and fatigued. Did I skip one? Oh yeah, high carb, oh, high carb grains, fruits, and feel hungry again soon after. That's pretty self-explanatory. Check that if that is something that is happening a lot. And a high carb meal, feeling gassy, bloated, and fatigued. I feel that way. If I eat a big pasta dish, I'm all bloated, gassy, fatigued, and you know, just want to lay on the couch. And I have extreme light quality. So, um, excuse me, Karen. Yeah. I have a question. I know you said for the um, cold quality, the planet was the moon for the Vata and Kappa. And the mm -hmm. light quality was Mars. Did you say the one for the um, heat? Sun. I, I actually, I wasn't planning on getting into the doshas. Oh. I'm sorry, into the okay. planets. But um, I can't help it because I am a Jyotish astrologer. And every, I see the world through it. So I can't help but throw it in a little. So I'm sorry if I, if I confuse anyone. Yeah, so we can, we can just go over which planet is, is which. And then I can, in, in the next class, Go more deeply okay. into it because it's really exciting, really accurate and insightful information. So yeah, the sun is what's governing heat and the cold quality is the moon and Mars is the light quality. So let's move on to the next where one. Does, where does uh, uh, milk come in into this? Because I can't tolerate milk. Oh, well, let's just wait for that. I forget the, all the questions. Maybe there's a milk question here. So yeah, you, I can't either. So um, you and I have a lot of light. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can't I, I, I can't take, tolerate any kind of dirty product. Dairy is not good for you. Yes. So that actually is moon related, believe it or not. Moon, moon um, governs milk. That's why they, in the Veda, they, they put milk outside on a full moon with rose water and they, um, ask for the blessings of the full moon to go into the milk, all of the ojas and the, um, the nectar that it creates, the, the, the full moon creates this beautiful, um, and there's a word for it, a soma. So the soma goes into the milk and it makes the milk more magical during the full moon, but it does increase, you know, um, the power of the milk so you can still get a little indigestion if you're not, um, able to digest dairy, but if somebody can digest dairy, I can do goat milk. So I'll put goat milk out on the full moon. Where would I put it? I live in an apartment. I can't put anything outside. No, you can't. <laughs> you, <don't have> to. <laughs> you, you can just 
open the window, maybe put it on the windowsill. I don't know. It's not something you need to do. I don't think you need to do it. Don't even worry about doing it because you don't do well with milk anyways. But I, I do well with goat milk. Have you ever tried goat milk? You might be able to do goat milk. I've never tried goat milk. Yeah, you could try it because it's a different prakuti, a different, it's um, look at goats and they compare the energy of a goat to the energy of a cow. So the cow is kapha, a very earth. And the goat is, is more Mars, like very wiry. Well, so, yeah, so, so let's look at the next question. Have heat, what is it, ever have problems with anemia? Yeah, an iron overload. Yeah, so if you either have um, B12 anemia or, or hemoglobin, low blood, red blood cells, um, or iron overload, that, um, yeah, actually, Jackson, do you have that? That's genetic. My daughter has it. And I think my yeah. dad has it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, hemochromatosis. You have that? Uh, I don't, it's not really, uh, I don't, I don't think I do. I have really high iron though. I don't, I haven't gotten tested for it. Do but I, I also have Raynaud's iron? syndrome. And when we were talking about cold quality. Oh, you, know, you do then. You have to was, check that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you do have high iron. You should check that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, have heat and burning in the stomach, gastritis and ulcers. That's pretty clear, that question. Dislike sour foods, pickles, vinegar, same kind of question that, that we had in the other. This, um, sour quality increases heat in the body and light quality is related to pitta. So manic depression, other mental disorders. Any questions on that? That's pretty simple. Feeling a sense of well-being, centeredness from high protein foods. I do. Have excessive bleeding anywhere in the body. And, you know, especially for women, if you have high um, amount of blood during menstruation, have pain between the shoulder blades. And that has to do with the gallbladder, by the way. That's a gallbladder meridian. So in between the shoulder blades, it can, can be a sign that the gallbladder is not happy. Uh, but that's not always the only sign. It can also mean, you know, lung situation. But in general, this, it's a gallbladder situation. And Mars rules the gallbladder. So feel that you're losing energy faster than you can gain it back. This is somebody who just gets tired out easily, doesn't have a lot of endurance. And then alternating between diarrhea, constipation, irritable bowel syndrome is this avata pitta disorder. So this is avata pitta um, guna. The light quality is shared by vata and pitta. Undernourished physically and emotionally. Always feeling like, you know, I need, to, I need to go buy a supplement. I think I need this. I might need to eat a little more of that. Or you're not feeling like you... you you, you feel like you're missing some nutrient, your brain is a little foggy, or you you know, it's that feeling of not feeling completely nourished. It's hard to get completely nourished in this day and age with no good soil, our vegetables are grown horribly, and we don't have time to cook our own meals. So a lot of us can feel undernourished, but I'm talking in general, over your whole life, were you somebody that just didn't feel like you were, you were nourished properly? It doesn't mean that you're skinny. It just means that you didn't, you weren't absorbing. You can even look at your tongue and, and um, the scallops tongue at the edges will tell you you weren't able to get all your nourishment. If your tongue is nice and um, round and there's no little scallop edges, then you're probably digesting your food um, very well and getting your nourishment and all the, the protein and nutrients that you need. Karen, does that, yeah. go, does that go away, like, if you do, like, if, if you have, because I, I notice that I have that, but I don't know if I always have, and I've kind of been, like, I look at it, like, every day now, because now that I've noticed that I have it, and I'm, like, hoping it goes away. Yeah, it does, actually. The body's amazing. 
because these are just indicators of, of what's really happening inside, so that, that what's happening inside is really what is the controller. So if the controller inside is, you know, digestion and, and, and assimilation and you're doing well with it, then those symptoms of the scalloped tongue will go away. Okay, cool. Even, yeah, even the lines on your palms and your hands. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting that the palm readers, it's part of Jyotish actually called Hasta. Hasta is um, a leg of the Jyotish. And if we have um, the same thought patterns over and over, then, the, then our hands, the lines in our hands won't change much. But if we can re have re um, rebirthing of thoughts, re redo our, our um, mental paradigm and core belief system, changing our thought patterns, that our actual lines on our hands can change and our own karma can change, which is so cool. Okay, let's look on what's moving on. High blood pressure. Yeah, high blood pressure. We did skip that one, didn't we? Undernourished, we went to that one. So high blood pressure is a big one. Uh, extreme sensitivity, allergic skin. And symptoms that worsen in hot weather. So how many did you get in this field, in the light field? One, two, three, four, five, six. I got five. I got six. Six, Indu, and yeah. five. Who is the one that got five? Herondale. Herondale. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, this, yeah, Bata and Pitta in the light quality. And um, Jason, what'd you get? Jason? I had two. I had two. Just two. Okay. Yeah, you're pretty kapha. You know, just, I think there's a lot of kapha in you, just looking at you and getting to know you. And then Susan, what did you get? I had six. Six. And Nikki? I had 11. 11! Oh my gosh! You're my Mars soul sister! Okay, now, I want you to remember these numbers, because when I do your Jyotish charts, you're going to look at your planets and connect this. All of this is very interesting. I have Mars as my lord of my chart, and light quality is, is really a big deal for me. Okay, so, um, and we'll see, maybe you, um, you too, Susan, have Mars, lord of your chart, and maybe you too, Indu, have that. And who else? Molly, what'd you have? Molly's still, Molly's not there? Um, I had five. Nice. Yeah, I got Molly had nine. Ma who has nine? Me. <laughs> the oh, other you me. have nine? Oh my goodness. I told you I'm kind of pit of poison. It's yes. the climate. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was thinking you is more kappa, but you know what? It's, you had a nice mix of it all. But very um what's the lord of your chart? I know that Richard did your chart. Um Pisces Ascendant. I cannot remember the Lord. Oh, that's Jupiter. So Jupiter is Kapha. So yes, you are Kapha, but there must be some some Mars in you. Because you've got how many, did you say? Nine. Nine, yes, you've got a strong Mars somewhere in there. We, yeah, so we'll have a look at that together. Okay, so moving on to heavy quality. Heavy quality is ruled by Jupiter. Kapha, it's a Kapha planet. Gain weight easily, especially from meat and fatty foods. Have trouble losing. Weight, you just go into a chocolate store, smell the chocolate and gain weight. <laughs> I, my poor sister, oh, she has Jupiter Ascendant as well. Capricorn, not Capricorn, um, oh God, I forget what it is. She's Jupiter, Lord of her chart, but she cannot walk into a, a chocolate store or a bakery or she, she smells it and she gains weight. Suffers from obesity. Um, have her have pain under your right rib cage. And what she, he's asking is the liver. Does your liver hurt? Because Jupiter governs the liver. And have trouble conceiving children or um, a difficult pregnancy because um, the conception vessel has everything to do with um, the liver. Uh, feel depressed and melancholy often, and um, we all feel depressed every now and then, but if this is something that, you know, follows you, 
then um, sometimes it's hard to know because you, you, you don't know, is, is your depression normal? Um, I would say to use a barometer, of, you know, do you, do you just kind of just feel bummed out a lot, you know, that you just don't really want to go out and socialize with people and it affects your way of living? Then I would say yes, that, that needs to be checked. Uh, but every now and then we're all going to get bummed out. So to don't just check it if, if it's, it happens every now and then in a normal way. Okay, what else? Feeling heavy? Did I skip one? Oh, no, we did skip a bit here. Speak slowly. You know these people who have deep voices and they're just so slow and articulate. Like they don't speak fast and it's very monotone. I love just going to listen to speakers and just try to figure out their dosha, just by the way they speak. Abnormal fat growth, cysts, tumors, fibroids, lipomas, even those skin tags. You've seen somebody with skin tags, a lot of skin tags, it's a big Jupiter issue, big um, heavy quality kapha issue. Uh, diabetes. Is a very big cup of problem. A lot of cup of people get diabetes even if they don't eat a lot of sugar, but cup of people tend to love sugar. Um, here, let's see, liver problems. If you've had jaundice, if you were born with jaundice or hepatitis or any kind of liver cysts or um, high liver uh, enzymes, anything to do with, you know, what is that, that disease of the liver that everybody gets when they're tired? Mono. Mono is a liver issue. Check that. And then if you perspire a lot, pers check that. And if you just feel heavy, even if you're not heavy, but you feel heavy. I, I've seen people who walk around with the weight of the world on their shoulders and they're all hunched over. And then I get to know them and they really feel the weight of the world. And they're not heavy looking, but they feel heavy. Have just, and this is something that has always followed so much so that their shoulders are permanently forward. So you can tell a lot about somebody just by their posture, ayurvedically. And if you have a distension in your lower abdominal wall, you know, if you have bloating just permanently just sticking out, like you, you look three months pregnant all the time, I would check that. Adhesive mucus. So there's all kinds of mucus. There's green mucus, yellow mucus, there's clear mucus, there's sticky mucus, there's um, non-sticky kind of almost like uh, clear, I can't explain it, but there's not a stickiness to it. You know what I'm talking about. If you have the sticky mucus, not necessarily yellow, but sticky where you can't blow your nose easily, you can't like get it to come up, you can't. It sticks in your body, um, that you need to check. Or if you spit it out and it's sticking on your tissue pretty tightly, <laughs> that's sticky mucus. Uh, and that happens. So that means uh, you've probably eaten a lot of sticky foods like cheese and dairy. Okay, usually skip breakfast. Actually, that's a good thing to do for a lot of people anyways, except our Vata people need to eat something. But for most people, you should skip breakfast and eat your biggest meal when the sun is highest in the sky at lunch. Uh, have slow digestions and craving for sweets. Every now and then we're all going to crave sweets, but I'm talking slow digestion with cravings for sweets combined. How do we know we have a slow digestion? Well, if you can remember when you were little and you used to eat, and feel okay, you can start going around the neighborhood, running around, playing ding-dong ditch, and you weren't all bloated and slowed down. But now you're older, you're eating, and you're bloated and slowed down. Then I would say if that's been with you for 20 to 30 years and you feel bloated about that and, and heavy and slow, like things are not moving, like a brick is in your stomach, then you need to check that. No, I don't have that. No, okay. There are people that do that just have, you know, trouble digesting a lot. And they, they need to eat lightly. I don't have a craving for sweets, but I do love having a dessert. <laughs> but I don't have a craving for it. If I don't get it, I don't get it. 
Great. Then don't don't check that because okay. then um, it's the craving is really what what it's saying. Okay. Slow digestion is one thing, but the cravings are part of this question. So feeling best with vegetables and whole grains is that. Uh, rather than too much. What does that feel best with vegetables and greens rather than too much? Oh, that question's all messed up. You, well, I'm a vegetarian, so I enjoy my vegetables. Okay, well, you feel better with them. Then you can write that down. Yeah. Check that as a yes. So how many people have heavy quality? Have a lot of heavy quality. More than three. Can I know who they are? I have nine. Molly! With I have five. Okay. I have, I have seven. Seven. Who's seven? Laura. Laura. Okay. And I have five. Uh, and you? You had five? Yes. Okay. I only have two. Two. Oh, yeah. I'm not surprised you only had two. I had seven as well. This is the other Molly. Other Molly O'Brien. Seven. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I have two. And that's um, Jason. Jason has two. Okay. I'm surprised, Jason, you didn't have more than two. I always think of you as more kapha. But again, you know, the kapha people usually don't have any symptoms because they're so healthy. Their ojas is so strong. Their immunity is so strong that they could go through this whole list and not check anything because they don't get sick or have a symptom. So if you don't, then um, I wouldn't be surprised, Jason, if you didn't have a lot of symptoms at all in any of these categories, because you looked like you had some, I think you, if I could just guess, you had a Jupiter ascendant, I'm pretty sure, if we'll have to check your chart, if you know your birth time of day, but I think you're very Jupiterian, Kappa, which is a great, you live a long time. So dry quality, let's move on, have constipation, chronically hard, dry, black stools, um, yeah, that's going to happen every now and then, but I'm talking chronically, you're constipated. Cracked skin, dry hair, dry nails. What is dry nails? Well, you know, the nails split. You know, see people who have splitting nails. And I, have, I have grooves on my nails. Uh, the grooves on your nails are indication of toxins in the meridians. So there, it's ama that is accumulated in your in your shotamsis and the channels and in, in um, and all the pathways, there, there's some blockages and um, we just need to detox you. And we all have them at some point, especially as we age, we accumulate toxins. And yeah, if you look at your fingers, my kidney finger has the most amount of grooves than any of the other fingers. And I know that my kidneys are, my, my kidney finger is the ring finger or all of our kidney fingers, the ring finger. All my fingers have it. Yeah, so probably you need to do a nice big cleanse in all of the all of the meridians, all of the energy pathways. But it's also indicating, you know, which which um, well, we can talk about the fingers and the and the which relate to what organs. That's a whole other topic. But okay, you can tell so much about the person just by analyzing the body. Little things like the fingernails. Okay, so moving on, um, tense muscles, cramping. There are people who wake up in the middle of the night with serious cramping in their um, calves or anywhere, and this is the dry quality. They're dehydrated and they're missing. They're um, missing. They're catabolic. They don't have enough of a reservoir of minerals, so they tend to cramp. They need magnesium and water. Okay, so feel best, and this is Saturn, by the way. Dry quality is ruled by Saturn. Saturn is a big, huge Vata planet. Um, I think that was the Lord of your chart, Karen Dial. I think you had Saturn. Uh, not 100% not sure, but you had a strong Saturn. Okay, so feel best with high protein, high fat diet. A sense of well being from high fat foods. Have incoordination or neuromuscular problems. And this can be as simple as that you're in aerobics class and everyone's going right and you're going left. It's, it's something you just can't keep up with and you just 
don't go to class anymore because it's hard for you to, to coordinate with, you know, everyone else is going right, you're going left, so you just, you know, bump into things and have a lot of black and blues on your legs. That is a very, um, it's a very Saturn thing to bump into things all the time because you're not, your eye coordination with the muscle, it governs the mumps of datsu. You'll learn about that muscle tissue. It, it doesn't go fast enough. The, the, the myelin nerve sheath doesn't, the nerves can't get to the muscle quickly because the myelin's dried up. And then you end up bumping into everything and going the wrong way. <laughs> so, uh, um, irregular, I don't know why I'm laughing. It's just, I just got a visual. So in um, irregular digestion, sometimes you're hungry, sometimes you digest well, sometimes you don't digest well. Low sexual energy, and this is continual. Low libido, if you just have a low libido and just really don't care about it, then check that. Uh, a weak yes. immunity. Weak immune system, always getting a cold or a flu, or you perspire very little. Memory problems. Great remedy for memory problems is doing nausea. You can buy the nausea oil and put some drops of oil up your nose and, and lubricate the brain. It will help increase memory and intelligence because the dry quality of Saturn dries out the nose and the nose is the doorway to the brain. So you can put drops of oil in your nose, five drops every night, go to sleep and you sleep like a baby and wake up with a good memory. And you can get that on my website or you can go to Dr. Lab's website and get it. I love Dr. Lab. I love mine, but doc, Dr. Lab's Super Nasia is awesome, really awesome. Super Nasia is spelled, um, super, you know how to spell, but Nasia is N-A-S-Y-A. -A. a lot of the students in the massage program already learned this, but those of you in the citrine program haven't learned about Nasia yet. <coughs> have a lot of burping. Um, Parkinson's is a Vata disorder, a Saturn disorder, dry disorder, MS, osteoarthritis, fatigue, d digestion, dull, dry looking eyes, hypertension, symptom that worsens in the fall. Okay, so let's tally that up. We're almost done. Can I get some numbers on the dry quality? Who had dry? I have six. Who's that? Indu. Indu, six. Okay. Anyone else? Susan, I have five. Five, Susan. Okay. I have five. Five. Who is that? Mickey. Mickey. Okay. Well, this is um, Jackson, it's I Molly, have... and I got three. Sorry. Molly got three. Yep. Jackson, did you have dry quality? Yeah, I have ten. Ten. Interesting. Okay. Saturn. Okay. Okay. I have 12. I got y'all all beat. <laughs> Molly, you had 12. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, um, that's interesting with a combination of Jupiter and Saturn, Kapha Vata, and um, the Ojas. Maybe, you know, that we need to work with Ojas. And yeah, oh, interesting. You're such an interesting creature. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> So, yeah, extreme kapha and um, vata. We live in a pitta society. Most people are pitta, and everybody wants to be president. Everybody wants to have the floor, and everybody wants to be the teacher, and everybody wants to lead and, and spread their name and be famous. And, you know, very pitta society. Everyone's driven and aggressive in, in America. There's not a lot of vatas and kaphas, but there's a lot of pittas. Dr. Lack used to say it in such an English way. We live in a pitta society. <laughs> I used to laugh when you could say that. And um, Molly, I, I don't know how you got, you, you, you're a teacher and a leader, but you're this very interesting kind of conundrum of um, vata and kapha, which is rare, but what, what a beautiful thing. So we need to work with ojas. Okay, we're going to get you more, some more ojas in you without disturbing kapha. That's the trick. Okay, so let's move on. Oily. What'd you say? Karen Dial only got two. Only got two. Oh my goodness. In the dry quality. Yeah. Wow. You're doing something, right? Foils. <laughs> you are. You're doing it. 
I think I, I got two in the dry Any, quality. Two in the dry quality. Is that Nietzsche? Oh, them Danny. Danny. And two. both being um have problem memory, <laughs> and I try I try to translate the word the difficult word. I I can't got it out, so I can say it, I got two first. So I, I couldn't understand that last part. Say that again. No, I try to try to translate the each sentence that you ask, that you ask, and I can't got it out. I try to translate, but I got two. That's two first <laughs> for for you. You tried to translate all the questions? Yeah, because it's difficult was for me. I tried to translate and I can't got it all because it's a lot of this problem. <laughs> I tried to find it. Some I understand, so some I don't understand. Some is, you say, Simpson. So I tried to figure it out. Is your husband close by? Can he help you read this? He tried to ask me, do I need to see it? But now he watching movie, so I try to find by myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, just do the best you can, you know. If he's there, I think he need. If he sit beside me, he need to sit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you can bring this to him another time after he watches his movie. You can do it sit with him. You don't have to do it now, but you have this, so you can do it later. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So moving on to oily quality. Oily quality, I think, is the last one. So uh, this is ruled by Venus. So Venus governs the oily quality in the body. And Dr. Lab used to say, love is oily. And love is oily, and Venus is the ruler of love. So let's see what we have here. Experience nausea, digest, digestive upset after eating high-fat foods, oily foods. Now that can be gallbladder related. So um, this is your whole life. Because in the end, you know, we, our gallbladder starts to get full as we get older. And a lot of older people can't, their gallbladder can't do fried foods. So we really need to use the beginning part of our life for this question, this particular question. All your life, did you kind of feel like not so good, nauseous after eating fried, you know, french fries, something like that. Um, rheumatoid arthritis. And have you had that? Diabetes or hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. Um, feel best with low fat, low protein, high carbs. Thyroid imbalances are related to Venus, especially low thyroid. Um, frequent bladder, urinary tract infections. Um, Reproductive problems, oily loose stools, constipation, have oily skin and hair, have skin problems in general, psoriasis, and I'm talking skin problems that are, are more like um, the oily psoriasis or oily acne, not necessarily the dry, white kind of, you know, milia, pimples, or psoriasis that's just dry and white. I have a uh, vitiligo, so would that come into this? Um, isn't that when it's white? Yes. Yeah, so that's more kapha. Um, that wouldn't come into this. No, because it's very white color, and kapha is white, so uh, oily is also kapha too. Is it? Is it? Is your um? Uh, I can't ever say that word, but is it? Does it have like an oily texture to it, the skin? My skin on the whole is oily. I have a high oily skin. Okay, yeah, then right, then click, yes, this would be yes. Because if that, that virtual, virti I can never say the word. Vitiligo. Vitiligo. If, if it's an oily type of white color, then it is to do with oily. If it's dry and not, um, you know, unctuous, just sort of a dry, scaly, peely white that appears uh, on your skin. My skin is not dry. My skin okay. is not Okay, and then yes, say yes to that one. Pro profuse sweating, oh, we forgot spasms and convulsions. Gain weight after high fat, high protein foods. Have epilepsy. Kidney problems. Low back pain. 
and have symptoms that worsen in the spring, which is cup of season. So throw some numbers out at me. I have four. Four, okay. I have zero. Who has zero? Susan. Susan, okay. Okay, and then Jason, did you have any? I'm thinking you might have some in oily. Jason? Yes, I had three. Three, yeah. Okay. Um, is that the highest number so far? Um, I had five. It's Molly. Molly had five. Okay. Yeah, Molly, the other Molly also has five. Oh, oh nice. Two <laughs> Mollys had five. Okay. okay, and um, Jason, did you have three? Was three your highest number of, of all of the, the qualities? Yes. That's what I thought. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to add up their numbers and find out which was the highest one. Okay. Okay. And then I, I would like to know if, if I could just go through. I just, because I'm maybe because I'm just nosy, but <laughs> I want to know. In, in uh, what the first one I had 10 and that's the highest. Okay, so let's call, let's Indy, let's associate your um your dosha with heat. So write that down, heat. Heat. And, yes. Uh, you know, there may be other factors involved because we're complicated human beings. We're multi-dimensional creatures that you know we just can't be one thing. We're um, we're many, many things all at once. And the second highest was Cool quality, I had seven. Seven? Okay. Yeah. All right, well, let's stick with the heat right now. I'm, I'm leaning toward heat with you. Okay. Let, let me go in order. I'm going to call out names because I see your, all your names here. I'm going to start with, um, after Indu, I had Molly O'Brien. What did you get? Um, the highest number that I had uh, was seven. Under seven. the, um, yeah, under the heavy, the kapha. Kappa heavy, Jupiter. Okay. Yeah. All right. And Jason, what did you? Um, I have three. Oily. Under... oily. What's that? It was oily, right? I have three for oily and three for dry. Three for dry and oily. Interesting conundrum. Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. Um, I need to look at your chart more carefully. Okay. Let's, let's, um, I don't know what to say then. It's going to be your um, your uh, vata kapha like like Molly. Woohoo! Welcome to the club, buddy. <laughs> and then and Molly, you're I think you're the next one. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me just make sure I do this in order so I don't skip anybody. My screen only shows three at a time. Jason, and the next one is Indu, and then Susan. Oh, um, the highest one I had was seven for heat quality. Seven. Okay, heat. All right, and Karen Dahl, what did you get? Um, I got equal cold and light were both five. Five and cold and light. That's very Vata because you know, light and cold qualities belong to Vata. So Vata Pitta, um, we knew that anyways. So yeah, um, more dominant Vata for sure. Yeah, more, you know, as we're aging, it's just be more Vata we need to look at. So let's write that down. You, let's show, if you had five and five, pick the more Vata one to follow, especially since we're in Vata season, we're in Vata cup of season. Okay, so let's um, move on to Molly O'Brien. Did I miss anybody? Hold on, this, this thing is not going right. Um, Nikki. Nikki, what did you get? Um, 13 for heat. Oh my goodness, you're on fire. <laughs> Oh, wait, I get you eating some cucumbers right away. Yeah. Yes. 11 in light, too. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and that's another quality of pitta. So let's get you on a pitta-soothing diet. The diet for heat that I attached in your email, for sure. And let's see what else there is. Nikki. Nikki, did you go? Wait, that was just Nikki there. Okay. Ruby. Can you tell me how many you yeah, had? Yeah, I had... I had uh, for heat, I yeah. had eight, and eight. then for light, I had nine. 
So nine was your bigger one. Okay, yeah. so, so light quality Mars. So you're going to eat for a light, a light diet, the, uh, follow the diet for lightness. And that's very Vata Pitta, Vata Pitta equal. So um, Laura, what did you get? I got 12 for light. 12 and light, same for you than the, the diet of lightness. That's my diet too, light quality diet. Okay, moving on, Molly O'Brien. Did you already give me yours? Now my brain's all confused. Yeah, um, I was seven in seven. heavy quality. Okay, you did, yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, then um, this is a great time of year to follow a kapha diet as well as a vata diet, especially when it, on snowy days, on cold, snowy, wet days is very kapha time of... Um, uh, the season, and that's the best time to eat foods to pacify and reduce kapha heavy quality in the body. Okay, so Jason, you're going to reduce oiliness. Um, I know you get dry, you got dryness as well in there, but um, I think for now, since um, my gut feeling for you says oily, I'm going on intuition because I know you. So just stick with the oily one right now because you don't know which one to stick with. Um, you know, for this moment, and then when we get to the Vata season, the dry season, then you can switch your diet over to dry. But while we're in Kapha season, which is winter, spring, stick with following that, that diet for oiliness. Okay. Yeah. And then Ivy, what did you get for um, the most amount? I'm here, Karen. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I actually was missing a couple of pages out of my printout, unfortunately, but I was following you along. I th I'm mostly Pitta. I got like maybe three in Pitta, two in uh, Kapha, and two in, in Vada. Is it the, the heat Pitta type? Yeah, but not, not so many. It's like three, three, two, and two. Okay, so you had three in heat, two in light. Okay. Yeah. And two in um, in the dry. Okay, well you're pretty, you're doing pretty good. You don't have a lot of symptoms. So uh, when I would say if it's not broken, don't fix it. So you're doing very well with whatever you're doing for food choices and lifestyle choices. But if you want to refine it, then I would stick with the pit to diet. The, the diet that you said was heat was number three. Uh, heat was probably the strongest. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then then just you know, watch out for spicy, hot foods and start becoming familiar with the pizza diet and what to avoid You know, as long as you're not eating tomatoes every single day, you're probably all right. Thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Did I miss anybody? Let me scroll down, I know I did. Nietzsche, Laura, uh, Laura, you just spoke. Nietzsche, what did you get? Uh, I get cold egg. Egg and cold? Yes. Okay, so that, Cold quality is moon. So that's how you follow that diet for coldness. Yeah. yeah. You're a very moon-like person, very nurturing, nourishing person to be with. Your massages are very nurturing. So I can see that moon energy in you. Oh, the moon you. Is, the, is the mother. It's the nurturer. Okay, so moving on to Molly Dolly. You got, oh, that's right. You got nine and nine, right? I got nine and nine for heavy and light. And then my heat and cold were evenly matched with just one more in heat. And then <laughs> oily, I had five. And dry, I have 12. Wow, my gosh. You're all over the map, girl. I am. So what to do? Down. Well, you know what to do because you're, you've been studying this for so long, you don't need me to tell you. But in, in this is good for me to say for everyone to hear is when in doubt and you get a client that's all over the map and you can't figure it out, you follow the season. Come back to the season. Right now, the season is winter and we have high amounts of uh, vata and kapha, cold and um, wet. Um, sometimes we have dry, you know, on, on a day that's cold and dry with no snow. So we follow, we follow a kapha and a vata diet at this time. But as we approach spring, it's going to be more kapha 
that we would be following a fat diet to reduce kapha elements. So, so um, understanding that Ayurveda is according to the principle of opposites. So if you have a lot of this excess earth, water, cold, dry in the air, in the environment around you, it's also affecting your physical body. So you'll, your body will actually embody the season. And you want to reduce the season to do the opposite of what it is so you can stay balanced. So that means you would choose foods that are the opposite of the seasons and the qualities of the season. So, for example, if we're having a snowy day in winter and um, you have a choice of, say, um, a salad or a melted cheese sandwich or ice cream, what would be the food that would, would help reduce and do the opposite of the weather? Can someone tell me? Warm, uh, you would eat a warm cheese. Uh, <laughs> what did it say? A cheese oh. sandwich? Something warm? Uh, yes, the warm is a good point. Um, but I don't know that I said warm, did I? Maybe. Oh, oh melty, I did say ice melty. Cream. Yeah. Yeah. Ice cream, so, ice cream. That was, cold. that was a trick question. That's not fair. So um, I have to start again. So let's go with this very simple question to say you have a snowy day and you want to balance yourself, right? To reduce that snowy quality that is outside as well as in your blood platelets are sticking together from all the snow, sticky snow in your body. And then you're choosing between, uh, let's go with um, a choice of salad or you want um, a, some crackers and cheese. And I have crackers and cheese. You would choose crackers and cheese, right. So ice cream would not be a good thing to have because it's like eating snow. You're having more of what's already out there. It's cold and it's wet, damp, and it's building earth. So we wouldn't want to eat ice cream during a snowstorm, but, you know, cheese, not good during a snowstorm either, really. But um, if it was warmed up, then that would be better. Just a little. A hot bowl of soup, or a yeah, hot bowl. Yeah, that, that would be, that's probably the other, I should have asked that question because that would be the extreme opposite. The hot bowl of soup or ice cream, but I thought that would be too obvious, so I was trying to get you to really think. But yes, the hot bowl of soup. But the soup is also liquid quality, and we have snow out there, so we really want something hot, but not too oily or wet or liquid. So think of a meal that is still hot, but you're not, you know, eating this like viscous, unctuous meal. You want to reduce the cold quality of the outside, the snow, as well as the liquid quality that the snow brings. So you would choose foods that were a little drier and warmer. And that's how you work with Ayurveda and the seasons is to do the opposite of what's outside. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. And then you can be balanced that way. And Ayurveda is all about balance, <coughs> equanimity. And sama means balance and equanimity. So I'm going to review my um, very beginning part of this little slide. See this? What's your dosha? So let's talk about this really quickly, and then we'll go to the PowerPoint. We have catabolic and anabolic states. And you were born with that type of body. You could have been born with a catabolic type of a body or an anabolic type of body. And that's important to know because if you were born with a catabolic body type, you tend to really need to supplement. You need to make sure you're nourished and you'll need your protein and you'll end up having um, potential autoimmune disorders because the catabolic system attacks its own sometimes it attacks its own self. So it, it's like the sun, it, it burns down, it breaks down um, amino acids and the reservoir of, of supplements and minerals and vitamins that we need. So you may have been born with a catabolic body type and you need to know that so that you can make choices, informed choices on, well, I have a, 
a catabolic body type, I better make sure I'm supplementing and that I get my protein today like that. Um, and, and extra gentle care of not exposing yourself to people who are sick because your immune system is fragile, more fragile than somebody who is born with an anabolic body type. They never get sick, not never, but they're, they're the people that just can walk through a hospital room or a hospital with all these sick people and never get what they have. And um, they just live a long time and, you know, don't have any issues really <clears throat> to speak of. They don't need to supplement or spend a boatload of money at Whole Foods. They can eat McDonald's and get away with eating stuff that's really not good for them. They're just those, that's just people out there. You know those people out there. And I wish I was one of them. <laughs> I just can't get away with anything because I'm very sensitive and born with a weak catabolic immune system. So when my body goes out of balance with okay. catabolic tendency, I tend to lose weight. Whereas if you have an anabolic body type, you will tend to gain weight or swell, get edema, um, and tend to get more cup of like emotionally, needy, clingy, glom on to people and things. Um, but those catabolic body types, you know, I got Graves' disease, I had an autoimmune disease, fibromyalgia, and I had to figure out how to build up my immune system again because my own body attacked itself. My immune system attacked its own self. So I had to, you know, nourish myself with um, more protein and find the right supplements and um, go extra gentle. And I couldn't do extreme exercise, even though I'm a type A. I wanted to do four aerobic classes a day. I was an aerobics teacher and I wanted to sweat bullets and I just loved dancing. But losing all of that sweat and losing all of that prana as I was exercising was destroying me because I was catabolic to begin with. So Dr. Lab took one look at me and felt my pulse. He said, you cannot sweat. You must not perspire. You must only glisten. Glisten. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I want to sweat. So I love it when I work out and drift. And, you know, I, I don't want to worry about supplements and spend all this food on vitamins. And I don't want to have to do this. so much more work to be metabolic. You have to always make sure that you have enough protein. I carry, I carry whey protein collagen bars in my purse because I, if I don't, by the end of the day, if I have not had my protein as a catabolic type, I'm, I'm, I'm toast. So those anabolic types, you can sweat. You can more than glisten. You can drip. And, um, you should drip. You should be in hot yoga, Bikram yoga. And you don't need to carry around protein bars. And you really don't need to do a lot of supplementation. So you, you need to figure out which one are you. So the kappas and the vatas, I'm sorry, the kappas are the anabolic, and the vatas and the pittas are the catabolic types. Um, even though in this poll it says kappa vata, that's because it's the moon and it waxes and wanes, and it, it's a little tricky there because you have to kind of go with the cycles of the moon. So in general, vata and pitta, are catabolic and um, anabolic are the um, kappa types of people. Does that make sense? Anybody have a question? Now, uh, in this uh, heat quality, my number was 10, so that uh, means I would be pitta? <coughs> yeah, you're catabolic. Yes, okay. Yeah, you need to take extra special care, go more gently. You need to supplement <clears throat> make sure you get your protein like that. Okay. Okay. And so this is a good little chart for you to look at. You can see what, what each of these, these um, attributes or genes regulate, which organs they regulate. And these can mean you can have a weakness in these organs or you can have strength in them depending on um, your own constitution. So uh, for me, I, I have a weakness because I have a catabolic type and a lot of heat in my small intestines, bones, and heart. So um, this is very telling. Also, gallbladder is, for me, I have a light quality. So ask yourself where you fit in there. Like what, what, is, um, what speaks to you most? 
start learning about yourself. And sometimes it's karmic. I have a mother who has really karmic health, and it is so hard to figure her out. She, she's ruled by the nodes of the moon. The Rahu and K2 govern her physiology. So she just, you never know with her. She's going to have something that comes up. You can't diagnose it, and then it goes away. And you never know why or when it's going to go away. And so the strangest things that she gets, and I just stopped. I stopped going by the seasons and stopped trying to figure it out because it's karmic when it's node related, Rahu and Ketu. And in that case, when you get people like that, this is karmic from a past life. You just need to work with them on the emotional body. You keep them happy by, you know, giving them, tell them jokes. You know, Molly, you'd be great at this. Tell them a million jokes. Make them laugh. Make them, you know, keep them hopeful. Puja and mantra and... Um, massaging, touching, um, give them color and gemstone therapy, all the alternative therapies. Mantra is really good for people with puja, I mean, um, with um, the nodes that just have these illnesses that come and go and we just can't figure them out. They need um, special prayer, they need um, group support, things like that. Okay, so we're going to move on to the PowerPoint. Any questions after we did this whole thing? What what is the high? What are the numbers we have to sort of uh, look at? Because my cold is seven, and my and my light light quality was six. So wh what is the best one to look at? The one with the highest amount is the one I want you to focus on right now. All right, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Yes, and then we can look at the other ones later because we're going to go with the seasons and we're going to learn more about ourselves as we go. But there's so many layers to us as human beings that I'm just giving you one or two layers to observe about yourself. And as we go, we're going to peel the onion and look at all the other layers about you. So you'll get to discover more about yourself as we go. So these numbers are important, so keep them. When I do the Jyotish issue, we'll, we'll look at those numbers as well. That Jyotish um, class will be a little bit more insightful about those other numbers. Thank okay, you so, so much. I'll share my screen with you on the PowerPoint. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. Okay. What time does the class end? Nine o'clock, right? Six thirty, seven thirty, eight thirty till nine, right? We go to nine. Okay. So first screen. Discover your dosha. Second screen. So if someone is gonna ask you, what does Ayurveda mean? You really need to have an answer. So I'd like you to be able to have something to say that there's so many ways to describe Ayurveda. It's the mother of all healing. It is the science of digestion. It's the science of long life or longevity or longevity. It is um, life's wisdom. It's um, God, there's a million other ones. Science of self-healing. So what I'd like you to be able to do is pick one that just rolls off your tongue. So when you talk to somebody, oh, I'm taking I'm in school for Ayurveda, you may get somebody who's never heard of it, and you should be able to say, well, what they say, what is that? You should say something and, and mean it. Like, oh, yeah, it's the science of, of uh, self-healing. You know, whatever it is, uh, something that you, that you say with conviction. And then if you want to break it down, I think it's important to know that Ayu means span of time. It means this specific lifetime. It doesn't always mean this lifetime. Ayu can refer to other times. Um, spans of time, but in this case of Ayurveda, it's this lifetime, and Veda is wisdom, and it's innate wisdom. It's not stuff you read in a book. It's wisdom that lives in our DNA. It's, it's um, you know, how we get a cut, and the body just knows it needs to scab over and heal. That's the wisdom. That body wisdom that we have, that's the Veda. The body just knows the answer. We have the Veda within us. Okay, moving on. Let me click the next button. Microcosms of the macrocosm. Once you understand this principle, you, you really can start to understand Ayurveda more. 
by understanding all the elements. And when I take a walk outside, which I try to do every day, get some fresh air and sunshine, I connect with the elements. I look at all the trees, the flowers, the little animals, the squirrels. I look at the sand on the beach. I look at the rocks, the waves against the rocks. And I think about all the interplay of ether, air, fire, water, earth, and how, how the seasons do a little dance with these, these five great elements and how these elements live within us. We have to have all five elements to exist in this world, all of them in us and outside of us. So let's move on. And I love how this happened. There's the sign of the Om at the top of the page and how all of these elements gave rise to Earth. So how space began everything from just the vibration of Om gave rise to ether. Ether really is um, space in the body, but it's really it's um, the subtle aspect of air. And we have to have ether. If we don't have ether, we can't hear anything. It's the reason we can hear. So without ether, you can't touch it or feel it, try to grab some ether, um, doesn't matter. It's still there because if you can hear me, then there's ether. And then ether began to move, and that's magic. I call the began to move part magic, and it gave rise to air, which is really wind, and you can feel the wind. It's an actual tangible thing, and it can be destructive and catabolic. You can actually have wind blow on a sand dune over and over and actually kill the sand dune. And the sand dune is completely eradicated from the wind. That's how catabolic wind can be. And then wind produces the friction and it generates heat, which is fire. And then fire melted the ethers and gave rise to the liquid quality, which is water. And then water solidified and gave rise to substance, which is what our physical bodies are made of, the earth, the kapha element. Our bodies are made up of all five elements, but if we didn't have earth and we just had just these first four, we would just be in our light bodies floating around. We wouldn't have the, um, the glue that keeps our bones and our muscles together. So earth element is what gives us a third dimension solid uh, form and shape to our souls. Okay. Any questions before I move on? We're good? Hope I'm not losing anybody. I'm going to keep moving. You can slow me down if this gets to be too mundane or you get confused. I'm going to try to bring this into to real life, too, so you can apply it to, to you know, practical things, and that way it stays in the long term. But if somebody just starts blurting out concepts and theory that has no connection to anything that you know of, it usually gets lost in short-term memory. So I'm going to try to bring some, some stories in here so that you can, you can really grasp these concepts. So ether exists in the spaces in the body. Now, that's a pretty simple concept because in your nose you have ether, in your ears you have ether. In the bones of joint capsules um, you have the ether element, in, you know, in the matrix of the bones you have, um, you know, in the, the actual infrastructure of the bones, it's all porous, and you have ether there. You have ether in your belly button. So um, any in your mouth is ether. So uh, wherever there's space, there is ether in the body. And then air regulates nervous impulses. So the, the function of air in the body um, I have to mention that I told you ether, its function is so that we can hear. It's an auditory function as well as um, we can have space. We want to have space in the body. It's very important for us to have space in the body. If we didn't have space in the body, we would have just an accumulation of, of um, an imbalance of too much kapha. So kitchery is one of those foods that actually creates space in the body. And um, it will help us to eliminate and have regular bowel movements because it's such a healthy food and I'll, I'll give you that recipe sometime if someone reminds me that you want to eat foods that create space in the body. So ether is extremely important. We can't shrink it just because we can't see it. 
then air, I, as a massage therapist, always associate the air element with, um, you know, um, uh, what's it called? Sciatica. You know, the radiating pain. People come in to get healed or, you know, try to get massage therapy to fix their sciatic pain. And it can be just, you know, one little spot right in the glutes. And, and that's fine. So that means that the air element's not been activated too much and it's more um, between fire and, and air, between those two. But once it starts radiating and jumping around, it's going, oh my gosh, it hit my calves. Now it's going down my hamstring. We know the air element is, is very much in excess and very involved in their body. So any kind of nervous impulses, um, sensations, circulations, contractions, um, expansions, any flow, all the five directional flows in the body are um, connected to the air element. Air is responsible for re regulating all of that. So that's pretty important to know. And the same thing in the universe. The, the wind has a function. If we don't have wind, the bees can't pollinate. And this, all of this is an interplay so that the whole world can stay balanced, not just our bodies. And so fire, um, I want to say something. I, just, I think it's interesting. If we can connect ourselves to Mother Earth, Mother Earth is actually in the stage of um, Vata. So, so we're going through old age. Mother Earth is old. And um, old age, she's getting, um, if you look at her rivers and her oceans are getting clogged up and um, our earth is, is just not so healthy right now because of the accumulation of all the toxins and we, we've, been, we've contributed to that. But it doesn't matter about the blame. It just is what it is right now. And we can just look at it as such that the earth is, is in tough shape. And um, it affects us as our, our bodies since, since it doesn't matter even if you were born like Jason, if you were born with too much oiliness or Molly is you were born with a lot of, you know, kapha and vata, still that layer of the earth being in its vata stage, a grandmother earth being an old lady right now, manifesting vata symptoms, earthquakes, um, changes, just erratic things happening in the earth, um, and dirty water and pollution, kind of like, you know, our fingernails showing clogging in, in the meridians and so as we age, we, we get, we accumulate um, stuff in the body. So it affects us. This old grandmother earth has an effect and an impact on each of us so that we have a little more vata in our bodies because of grandmother earth. Does that make sense? I hope I'm making sense. Yeah, so everybody is going to come to you with a little imbalance or excess of vata, just a little more than if they came to you 500 years ago. Um, 500 years ago, you know, Grandmother Earth was still old, but she wasn't as old as she is now. So moving on to fire, regulates metabolism, mental and intestinal digestion, its intelligence, temperature, and light perception. And water exists in the mucous membrane, saliva, tears, plasma, and blood. And the earth gives our body solid form, I already told you that, holding our pieces together. So let's think about it um, in practical ways so you can understand these great elements. The pancha means five, maha means great, and bhuta means elements. Five great elements. And let's go back to fire. Um, I, I connect fire when I have a massage therapy client come in and they describe their pain and their pain is burning pain or pinpoint sharp pain or they have an inflammation from an overuse injury or, or the site is hot and red, then we know there's too much fire in their bodies. And if somebody comes to me with too much water element, then um, they'll have a lot of mucus. They'll be coughing and their lungs will be kind of choking it up and um, they'll look watery, look oily, their tongue will look wet and oily, their eyes are going to be uh, glossy. Um, they can have edema and swelling, especially under the eyes. 
And then the earth people will come in that they're solid, low voices, and they have these pains in their bodies that have been there forever. And they don't really care. They're just kind of apathetic about it. Oh, yeah, that pain over there, that's been with me for a while. And they just say it in a nonchalant way where um, the Vata people will have serious pain and it's dramatic and, oh, my God, you got to fix it. But the earth people, um, their pains are dull. Their pains are um, tenacious, and they've been there a while, and they kind of put up with it. They can have a lot of apathy when they're out of balance. When they're in balance, they're very fun and jovial, kind of like Santa. They laugh in between every other sentence. They have a lot of earth on them. They can be like the salt of the earth, those kind of people you want to go to. And um, if you have a crisis, you want to, those are the people you want to have as your friends that can handle if you need to have a meltdown. They're there for you. Very earth people, earthy, salty, solid, stable people. Okay, moving on. Let me just get my mouse. Okay, so here we have the organs of perception, organs of action. We have the Tan Mantras, which are the subtle elements, and how they connect to the Bhutas, the elements themselves. So um, I always find this fascinating to contemplate on. So beautiful. Uh, the ears are um, connected to space and sound, obviously, ether. And the skin is connected to touch, obviously. And and air, and the eyes connect to um, fire element. It's like fire coming out of your eyes sometimes. If you meet somebody and their eyes are just really lit up, then you meet those people with the dull eyes. They're lacking tejas, they're lacking the, the, the brilliance, the fire, the pitta in the eyes. Um, tongue, um, it regulates taste, so it has water. If you have a dried up tongue, and you can't taste. So if you think about it, when you're old, I met an old lady once. It was so sad. I was eating chocolate in her shop. She owned a shop. And she looked at me and she said, how's that chocolate? And I said, oh, my God, it's so good. And she's like, you know, I'd like to eat chocolate, but there's no point eating it anymore because my mouth is so dry, I really can't even taste it. She was like 85. She just can't enjoy chocolate anymore because her mouth is dry. And I thought, oh, my God, this is a terrible, terrible thing they don't tell you about when you're young, that when you get old, your taste starts to diminish simply because your dry element is exacerbated. So we need to stay moist in our mouth so we can enjoy our food and keep that going, keep the taste going. As I think... Food is one of the greatest gifts on earth that we can taste. Um, at least I think that. She seemed to be okay with it, though. She, was, she looked at me like kind of lamenting, and she was looking at my chocolate like for well, the good old days. Um, but she kind of made peace with it. So it, it was really valuable. I walked out of that store just really in deep thought about vata and dry and food and the tongue and the saliva. All right, so the nose is reproductive, smell, and the earth element. Now, you can tell a lot about people when they have something wrong with the ears. You'll know that sound, ether, and air, those elements are going to be out of balance. Or if there's something wrong with the skin, the air element is out of balance, um, which is actually mercury. There's probably debilitated mercury or a mercury conflict or um, transit. And then the eyes are, um, if somebody, like I said, doesn't have fire in their eyes and they have dull eyes, then there's an issue there with the fire element. Maybe not enough agni, digested fire. Um, we need to, to, to examine that more closely. Um, if they have too much fire, if their eyes are just so bright and shiny, then um, you'll know a lot about them, that they are extreme hit to people. Um, the tongue is um, taste and water. I talked to you about that already. And the nose is interesting. So people who have a um, aversion to certain smells, they have an earth imbalance. Something in their earth element is out of balance. And that would be a, a clue that you would need to explore exactly what it could be. So we always look at everything as a clue for what's going on. 
So it may not just be the nose. It may, they may have you know, 10 other clues that you need to start piecing the puzzle together. But the first clue might be, oh, you know, I can't stand the smell of, of those magic markers when people are, you know, that stinky magic marker smell. And um, maybe it doesn't bother you at all, but she's bothered by it. You can know that there's something up with the earth element. And then the next thing she says, so you start taking notes during an hour uh, interview with somebody. And at the end of the session, you should have some sort of summary of, of which of the five great elements were mostly out of balance. Because all of them are going to be to some point. Everybody is at imbalance in everything. Everybody. The whole world. And your job for your own self and for your clients to figure out which of the five great elements is the most concerning, the most excessive. Because dosha means an excess or an imbalance, and literally it means translated fault. Dosha is not about your constitution, believe it or not. It's about your imbalance. So what five great elements of them is imbalanced? So when someone says, what's your dosha? They're really asking you, what's your imbalance? and to find out what of the five great elements is your imbalance is sort of like your Sherlock Holmes mission when you're seeing a client. So then you can give them chikitsa, which is Sanskrit word for management, lifestyle remedies, food, diet, yoga, mantra. Then you'll know just what to help them with once you figure out what of the five great elements are, are imbalanced. Moving on. And then we can have some Q&A in a minute, but um, let's get through a couple more slides. So dosha, I just already told you this, it means fault. And it can change. So your dosha changes a lot. And it can change, you know, if you change your job, you change your home, you maybe start living in Alaska, um, or you suddenly start loving ice cream, and you eat ice cream every night. And so all these changes, according to your choices daily, change your dosha. So the thing that doesn't change, rarely it changes, but mostly never changes, is your prakruti. That's a Sanskrit word that um, refers to, to constitution, your innate constitution, and it's the opposite of purusha. It, it is the um, creative element. So let's move on. We have a couple of lots of pits of body types there. I thought they were cute and I took them from Google. All right, so here we have introducing the three doshas. I think I described this already, but um, let's just review it again. Vata is a combination. It, it's a dosha, which is a biological principle encompassing ether and air. So, it, so vata is literally combination of ether and air and it means what blows and pitta is a combination of fire and water and it means what cooks and kapha is earth and water and it means what sticks so we have lots of sticky season in the spring mud season so mix water and earth you get mud and we get that inside of us too we get muddy inside of us in spring so a lot of us get colds and we're cleaning out the season of winter in our bodies as the mucus comes out of our nose. It's the body's way of getting rid of the season. And uh, that's why a lot of people do panchakarma in the spring because it's mud season and we need to get rid of the mud and lighten back up and make space in the body. And the panchakarma is Indian purification. <clears throat> it involves kitchery, a monofast of mung beans, basmati rice, pumi, coriander, fennel, ginger, and turmeric. And um, <clears throat> involves a basti, which is uh, like an enema, a colonic, and involves some herbs and some yoga and some specific body work for your constitution. Um, I think. Oh, there's a book out there that's called Watch Your Dosha Baby, and <laughs> I just love that title. But it's deceiving because it makes people think they don't know how to answer the question because they, they don't realize that dosha is an imbalance. So I think really what she, she wanted to know is what's your constitution, baby? Because that doesn't change. Was really, I mean, people don't walk around wondering, what's your current imbalance? You know, 
I don't know. Maybe she didn't mean that, but I don't think she did. I, 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 um, I went to her website and watched some of her YouTubes. I think she just didn't know that. I don't know. Anyway, so I just thought it was a cute name and, and a catchy title to her book. Any questions so far about this? Nothing so far? I have a question. Yeah. Um, if we were answering all of the dosha questions, you were recommending that we look at our over a lifetime to figure out our doshas. So, yeah. you know, the, but if doshas change, then at different periods in our lives, like for instance, where I am right now, I'm dramatically different than where I used to be. And so part of me is thinking, well, should I answer these questions based on, you know, the majority of my life, I was this other way. And my, my, I find that the doshas, you know, all those answers, those questions I answered completely different from what I would have for the majority of my life. Right. But the, the time I, of life I'm in right now, it is going to be different. It sounds like yes. and that my constitution is what remains the same. It's, it's where my imbalances are. So. Well, in some cases, that's a good question. In some cases, we really, the way we go out of balance can change. Mm -hmm. And in, in that, um, so we're born with blueprint and we're born with debilitated planets and um, exalted planets, or um, we're born with a, a certain uh, likelihood of getting a certain type of disease or an imbalance in our judge's charts. And that's determined when you are born and the planets around you, how they look in the sky at that time and that follows you. But in Jyotish, there is a time in someone's life, approximately happens around late 40s, early 50s, where you can actually start to express through a different chart, a different blueprint altogether, which is very exciting. And I think that you get to have a new blueprint. And, <clears throat> and that doesn't always happen exactly at 52 or I can't tell you what age. Uh, it usually happens when we have gone through so many adversities in our life that we've had to learn how to make lemonade out of lemons. And we no longer victims to the world. We don't see the world through victim mentality. We are grateful for our enemies, grateful for our adversities. And in that state of high consciousness, we evolve to what we call the Navamsha chart. It's a spousal chart. It's a new chart. And in there, you can have completely different ways of going out of balance, different types of um, physical illnesses so that that old natal chart isn't expressing through you as much. So I'd like to ask you, what age did you start to notice the change? Well, I actually... Menopause started things, but I really have noticed a huge change. And, and I, I'd like to think actually that the, um, I have less reactivity and, or less imbalances than I had before. And I have been through enormous amount of conflict, conflicting um, situations and stressful situations that all kind of cum culminated in my 50s. And now I'm towards the end of my 50s. And Things are balancing so much better. That's and great. So you probably did move out of your natal chart, and um, you moved into your Navamsha chart, which mm. we can look at. Mm. I, I also moved out into my Navamsha chart just two, about two years ago. I started noticing it, maybe a year and a half. And um, uh, now I'm 53 now. They say it's usually around 52, but it can happen sooner. It can happen. It depends on the consciousness. You can never give it a number. It's not chronological. It's about, about, some people don't evolve into the Nirvamsha chart at all because they don't really care about the evolution or their consciousness and they don't um, try to make lemonade out of their lemons. They just, you know, complain and they're victims and they're pointing at everybody and, uh, it's, you know, that's what, that's what, that's their prerogative. I have no judgment on it, but they stay in their natal charts. This is fine for them. I, I was glad to get out of my natal chart around each mm. one. So you also... Um, oh yes, I think it's been a it's been a, um, a very gradual, but probably more um, obvious to me now because I'm out of I would say around 52, right? Great right when you're saying yeah. Um, but but now because I'm past and I've 
pr had to process everything that's happened in the last seven years, um, I'm in a different place for sure. Well, that's exciting. Congratulations. Yes, it is. It's great. Yes. 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 You have, you have um, been initiated into your Nabosha. <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! Yeah. Good for you. So um, that means that you would be one of those people that could answer those questions in a way that would have just started um, when your new self evolved. The, yeah. the new, you know, so go, yeah, go back. Because it's been hard to answer them because I'm, yeah. I'm back there, but I'm here. So where do I, how do I answer them? Yeah, I mean, your, your natal chart is still a layer within you and me. I, I still express through my my natal chart every now and then. Yeah. Um, this this aspects that I, I can I can't get around them, but the Navamsha chart is is what I I can I, I'm expressing more from there than I am the natal chart. So we can't totally shrink all the questions that you answered throughout the lifetime. It still applies, but for you, since and, and it was too much in the beginning for me to to try to figure out which students have gone to their Navamsha chart. I just it's too much, too complicated. But I'm glad you said that. Maybe Indu, maybe um, a few a few others of you who are over 52, maybe you've gone into your Namamsha. So then you would ask, you would answer questions that um, would be since the change, maybe around 50. And it's not for me to judge who's gone into the Namamsha or not. I can usually tell when I have a client in front of me and I'm doing the Jochi's chart, I can, can tell that sometimes. But I, I can't tell anybody you know, right off the bat, just from a computer who, who may be 56 and, and hasn't gone into Navamsha, and that's fine. There's no judgment on that, but I, you just can't know. So, okay, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Now let's go on to the next slide. Oh, I loved this slide. I found this, and I just want to share the interplay of the doshas, how they all play together. If your body and mind were a handwritten story or a handwritten story, then vata is the ink, pitta is the pen, and kapha is the paper. Each one is vital. Okay. And, and actually kapha is, it lives in every cell in our body. It's the proton, the neutron, and the electron, vata, pitta, kapha. So let's look at this one, the imbalances that um, the doshas refer to. So these are the actual gunas that we're going to be discussing. That if you can understand the gunas of each dosha or the attributes of each dosha, you can get a really clear understanding of Ayurveda. It is, it is to me one of the most important lessons in this whole program is understanding the attributes and then assigning things in life as you're going along on a daily basis. Oh, that, that belongs to the Vata Dosha because that's dry. Or um, my, my bed belongs to the Kapha, um, heavy, soft, cloudy attributes. <laughs> <laughs> because my bed is a big, king-size, fluffy bed with lots of pillows. So I, I would give my bed three points in kapha. Um, I would give my pots and pans in my kitchen attributes of pitta, because I've burned all, <laughs> I have so burned pots and pans. I have sharp and um, sharp quality from burning, you know, I'm trying to scrub off, you know, and these little sharp prickly things from the burn. And I have rough qualities, which is the, the vata is involved with it, because wind blows the fire and uh, higher. And um, so you can just even look at them in people, qualities, well, that person's got a dry sense of humor, or well, that person's a little rough around the edges. And all of these Gunas belong to the doshas, and so learning them in a daily, in a daily way, and making them part of your language of how you might describe somebody, it, it really helps you to understand Ayurveda. It just becomes your new way, a new way of seeing the world through the gunas. May I ask a question about that? Yeah. So, so if the gunas are the attributes of of the um, doshas. That's different than being 
you know, assigned a dosha because in that sense, the dosha is representing balance. But the gunas are the qualities as opposed to the imbalances. So, so we are, say I'm a pitta, but, but when, when I say that about myself, that's regarding the imbalances that I have. Good so, question. That, uh, let me help you with that. Is this, that correct? The gunas are not about imbalance. It's the doshas right. that okay. are an imbalance of one of the gunas. So the gunas are, um, they are naturally organically occurring in nature. And, you know, they, they have, we have to have a rough quality. You're like, let's go up to a tree and feel the tree bark. Mm -hmm. The tree bark, it's beautiful, but it's rough. That's not imbalanced. That tree no. is naturally rough, and it's beautiful just the way it is. It's not imbalanced or sick. Correct. And yes, and, and so oh. if we look at moss growing on the ground, it's green and soft. We could say that has soft quality, even unctuous quality. And even maybe liquid, if it's a little slimy green, then those qualities belong to kapha, but that moss is perfectly healthy. It's just expressing through its own guna. Do so the guna, the guna is the pure quality of it as yeah. opposed to um, when we refer to ourselves as being of the mm -hmm. quality, it's more or less the imbalance of that quality or yes. the lack of that qual quality. No, 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 no. Doshas don't usually refer to a lack because once we start lacking, a dosha, that's, we're getting closer to death. That's, okay. that's yeah, that, that's not. So it's an overabundance of, yeah. of that quality? Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's too much of something, an excess of a dosha. So an excess of these, these great gunas. Mm -hmm. So if that tree bark started growing extra bark and extra rough quality on it, it would probably start to become diseased and the tree would eventually fall and die. Okay. That it, makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yes, good, good. I, I understand. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Nature is our greatest teacher. I love mm -hmm. looking at nature and understanding the doshas and the gunas. All right, moving on. I can send this to you if you ask me to. I love this PowerPoint. So here we have Vata Pitta Kappa. Here we have the seasons assigned and the gunas. And the kind of what they, you know, what they in general, can be. So you can't say somebody's all pitta. That means, you know, there, there's no kapha manifesting. I, I'm, I'm pitta, but I have some kapha manifestations. And, and Molly is a beautiful mixture of vata and kapha, but she has probably pitta in the mind. So the, these gunas and these doshas play out in all kinds of ways. And just to learn about your own self and where they're expressing mostly will help you understand where you fit into this society. Like how am I different and why and what's the barometer and, and, and you know, how, how am I unique? What foods should I tailor my, my diet to? Those are, this is why and this is about self exploration. Once you understand yourself, you can start understanding your clients better. Here we have Vata, cold, dry, light, swift, mobile, irregular, rough. So I'll say that again. Vata is cold, dry, light, swift, which is fast, mobile, irregular, and rough. So it happens in the fall and in, in the winter on days where it's not snowing, when it's really windy. And I think of it as um, these qualities, if you want to reduce Vata, what would be a great way to reduce these qualities? So I thought of hot stone massage. So the cold element of vata, I thought, well, let's take cold stones and heat them up. And let's take the dry guna and add some oil to the skin and to the stones. And then the light guna of vata, well, let's use some big rocks, some heavy quality rocks. Like these aren't light stones, they're not pebbles. I like the big ones, the big flat ones that you just lay on the belly and that takes the light quality out of the body and it kind of anchors you in like a big hug. And then the swift quality, the um, fast quality of vata, which is the wind, 
we can reduce that and reverse it by going slowly as we move a hot oily stone down the leg or down your spine. We don't do it quickly. We do it slowly with intention. We reverse vata that way. And the mobile quality, keeping things sort of static, which I like to do in a massage, leave a stone. Leave a big grandpa stone at the sacrum so that it doesn't move. And because vata is always moving, and if you get a massage and you get someone who's just moving really fast, doing fast, long, crazy strokes, it can be vata deranging. But if you get somebody who has a really powerful touch, but slow, and thoughtful, intentional, and they, they know how to ground and anchor the fast, mobile qualities of vata, you're going to get off that massage table and feel like a new person. And then the irregular traits of vata, like a lot of people have a deviated septum or they have a crooked smile <laughs> or they have you know, irregular scoliosis. So like the, the, the spine is kind of torqued. So all these irregular qualities can be um, mitigated, I would say, um, the opposite of that would, to give, would be to give, I'm using massage because that's my, one of my favorite things to do, is, is to do a balanced massage to promote equanimity by doing the right arm for five or 10 minutes and the left arm right after the right arm, five or 10 minutes and not skipping anything. I had a massage once where somebody just did my right leg and my left arm and skipped the other limbs and thought that was going to be it. That was, I felt so out of balance. And you, you did, you know, sort of irregular type of energy work. And it wasn't, I didn't feel it was coherent and cohesive and symmetrical. So you, you want to reduce irregular qualities by being predictable symmetrical and coherent with everything you say and do when you're trying to reduce the irregular quality. So, so if you can understand why a massage would be so wonderful if you get somebody who knows how to give a balanced touch, then, then you're good. Then you're happy and you'll go back for another massage. And the rough quality is totally mitigated by the soft quality of the oil. So if you want to reduce, and it also can be the soft quality of your voice, the soft quality of the table, the massage table can be cushy, and the colors in the room can be soft, the music can be soft. All of these qualities can be reduced and you can have the most amazing vata pacifying massage and reduce your vata by doing all the opposite. And the same thing for kapha, if we go through all the gunas of wet, cool, oily, heavy, dense, static, stable, and we do the opposite of those in a bodywork session or even in a relationship or even in um, decorating. If you're you know, decorating a room, you can you know, warm things up with just changing the color. You can, you can do like a nice orange, which would give it a very warm glow to the room. And um, you know, I'm giving you examples of how to use these attributes and then be aware of how to do the principle of opposites so that you constantly have solutions for mitigating an excess and preventing disease. Any questions? When we got pitta, we didn't say these qualities, hot, oily, light, liquid, mobile, sharp, soft, smooth. So can anyone tell me I know we're almost at 15 minutes before nine. Uh, maybe I'll skip that because I want to be able to have room for questions and answers. So let's just skip that question. Moving on, the four subtypes of prakruti. Janma prakruti, it, it is, prakruti is your constitution and it is determined when the sperm meets the egg. And when the sperm meets the egg right then and there, the preponderance of the doshas and the five great elements are determined and you are born as an embryo in the, in the womb. That's your prakruti. Then we have janma prakruti, where, you, where your prakruti is actually affected by karmic influences and genetic influences. Then you have deha 
prakriti, which is a, a contributing to your prakriti by your mother's dharma at birth, believe it or not. Like, what was your mother doing at birth? What was she eating? What was she thinking? Was she just having a fight with her husband and then she gives birth? All these energies in the room that have to do with the mother can affect a prakriti as well. Um, and then the dosha prakriti is the ratio of the doshas present at birth, the seasons, the planets, the mood, the time. Oh, I, I think actually, yeah, I, can, I, I combined the deha and the dosha, but they're very similar. And then the manas prakriti is the constitution of the mind, sattva, rajas, and kapha. Oh, you know what? I wrote that by accident, sattva, rajas, and thomas. There's a, a typo there, thomas. Let me just change that. There, we have Thomas now. And we'll talk about Sattva, Rajas, and Thomas later. Oh, and this is your chart, or anyone's chart. It's, it's a, a Jyotish chart, and it's interesting that the first house is where the head of the, the serpent is, the first house and the second house, third house, fourth house, fifth house, and it goes around uh, counterclockwise in that direction and um, the five great um, sense organs can be found here which is very interesting so the first house is the skin second house is the um, eyes the third house is the ears the fourth house is the nose is it the nose wait a minute eyes nose uh, I just lost my train of thought. Smell, nose, wait a minute, taste. So skin, ears, sorry, uh, skin, eyes, ears, nose, taste. There it is. So um, tongue. Oh, I just, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little, my brain just shut down. But anyways, uh, I will give that information to you when we do our jotish together, and I, I just... Don't my brain just died in that area? I don't know what happened. <laughs> I have a brain glitch, but we have five elements, five of the sense organs in the first five houses, and you can tell a lot about your nose, for example, what you might not like to smell, and you can tell a lot about your skin by looking at the first house. And so we'll we'll play with that together when we do the jyotish. So moving on. And we're going to learn more about the constitution of the mind, as well as Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. And here is, these are the seasons that I already discussed with you, but here are some imbalances that you can start to recognize. That um, dry, rough skin is a vata imbalance, insomnia. Insomnia is not always a vata imbalance. Sometimes it can be a pitta imbalance when you're really angry that you're not sleeping. If you're just gotten so pissed off that you can't sleep, it's usually because of pitta. If you just can't sleep in your vata and you're tossing and turning, that's, that's a vata insomnia. Um, constipation, fatigue, headaches, all of these are connected mostly to the vata organ, uh, vata dosha, I mean. So I'll let you read through that on your own. I'll send this over to everybody. If somebody would remind me. And then if you are absolutely confused about your dosha and don't know what's going on, if you look at your poop, the perfect poop, you can tell a lot about your poop, about your, um, your constitution through your poop. So what's the perfect stool? Who, if they don't teach you this in high school, they should teach you this. So a complete elimination, <laughs> Dr. Ladd used to say, Oh, satisfaction upon evacuation is the best bliss of all. <laughs> it's such a proper way to say it. So if you feel like you had an elimination that was incomplete, that the dosha is out of balance, there's some kind of symptom starting. So you want to feel that feeling of completion after a bowel movement. Brown color or banana shape is normal. Shouldn't stick to the toilet seat. It should be easy to wipe, no mess. Should be a minimal odor, it's going to smell a little bit, but if it has a rancid odor that something in the stomach in the intestines is fermented and, and too much pitta. And almost always the same, regardless of the food you ate. So your stool should be very regular and same, same. 
And then the imbalanced stool is the mucus in the stool, a green or yellow stool. Um, not from eating excess green vegetables, but green or yellow, but from bile, excess bile from the gallbladder. Black stool is not so good. It means your liver is in trouble. Um, every now and then, if you have slightly black, don't, don't panic. But if you're getting black stools, that's a sign to go to, to get, somebody needs to check you out. The greasy, shiny stool and oily stool is not always so good. It can mean you ate too much fried food. Clay-colored stools are not good. Blood in the stools or undigested food in the stools are not so good. And then we go on to more about the poop here. Here we can find out what's vata, what's pitta, and what's kapha, balanced and imbalanced stool. And he is recommended, this is Dr. John Dulliard. Um, he, he teaches about this, and these are herbs, trifala, slippery elm tea, mix that up for vata, irregular poops, and the amalaki. You can use this as part of trifala, actually, for pitta, and then you can just take trifala, which is an herb. You can find it online. Go to Banyan Botanicals and get, their, get your trifala from Banyan if you want. Trifala is one of those herbs that you always get from an Ayurvedic doctor unless you're pregnant or um, having diarrhea or colitis. Uh, usually those are the contraindications for trifala. But trifala is one of those herbs that just balances body, mind, the, the blood, brain, bowel. It is all three doshas. Trifala is vata, pitta, kapha. It has amalaki, bibitaki, and harataki. These are three fruits that have affinity for each of the doshas, and it balances all three doshas, and it has all five tastes. So the taste has action. So you do want to taste your trifala, even though it doesn't taste very good. Okay, moving on. And you can read through this later. I'm not going to read all of it to you because that would bore you to death. Oh, that's it. Um, I just had a happy little fun cartoon. Come on, inner peace, I don't have all day. <laughs> that was really funny, made me laugh. All right, so now we have a few minutes for Q&A. Anyone have questions? Karen, could you send us this PowerPoint? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's, there's such a lot of good information on it. Thank you. I have fun making it. Anyone else have questions? No questions? Well, you gave us, it's, you explained it in so much of depth, so. Oh, good. Well, I, I hope it, um, it was food for thought and you're all percolating on all the information and you're not overwhelmed. I don't want to ever overwhelm. Um, maybe, maybe we hit saturation and it's nine o'clock and everyone wants to go to bed. But um, I hope that, you know, my goal was to stimulate you so that you have more passion to learn Ayurveda and get excited about it with me. I, I'm excited. I love it. And it's changed. But I'm beginning to enjoy it now. You know, I'm sorry. I've studied so much of nursing and not Ayurveda, but now it is, I'm understanding it more and I'm in, I understand my body more and I seem to understand what's going on. It's definitely different, but I'm enjoying it very much. I'm so glad. I'm so happy to have you, Indu, a nurse. A nurse, and you know, I gotta give it to you. I can't, I'm just so proud of you for being Thank you. in this school. Yeah. So um, I, just, I just love this particular chapter. I think this is one of the most significant chapters. If you can wrap your head around this chapter, the gunas, the doshas, all the attributes, you can start really having a solid foundation and start getting really excited about Ayurveda and have confidence that you are going to understand this and you're going to understand yourself and you're going to understand the, the nature around you, the seasons, and you're going to start seeing the seasons in people and you're going to start having new eyes with everything. So... You know, nursing, they teach us how to assess a person and you can all the time assessing a person and you are learning how to, uh, you know, you start seeing their skin and you start looking at the way they're breathing and you're doing this assessment continuously. But now I have to learn to do an assessment in a different way. Yes. Not for you. Yes. 
not what I did. Now I would ask you to integrate though. Um, you might end up going extreme and just, you know, forgetting everything you learned in nursing because you're so excited about Ayurveda, but I would ask you to try to remember some of the things you learned in the nursing because it is, you know, valuable information you can apply and then you can selectively choose what worked and what didn't work. So you come, yeah, you, yes, you're coming in with a lot of knowledge that you can actually use as a practitioner, counselor, you know, as a nurse, I mean, you know how to use a stethoscope, you know how to take blood pressure. You, you have a lot of valuable information that's gonna actually make you a better counselor. So this is good. Well, that's what I'm aiming at. Good. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. I so enjoyed all of you. Thanks for listening. And I guess I will see you next time. Thank you. Namaste. Karen. Thank you, Karen. Namaste. Bye. Thank you Bye. so much, Karen. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Thank you Karen. You're welcome. Yeah. Namaste. Thank you, Karen. No.